guys, welcome to CrickFit. My name is Sam, this is Ibby. Uh, Ibby is our physiotherapist and today we're going to be helping you with your shoulder injuries and how the rotator cuff plays a really important part in protecting you from them. Alright, so I'm gonna, we're going to start by just explaining a little bit about what the shoulder is before we go on to what sort of injuries we can have. Um, to do that I've got this nice skeleton here. Let's get a nice close up. So, so this is the, the shoulder and you're looking at the, the front view. So this will be your clavicle down here, the bone that sticks out across the neck. This is the actual, the ball of the shoulder. Um, and then we call this space in between the glenoid fossa. And then if we can see that, yeah, perfect. Now, around here, we're gonna explain why that glenoid fossa is so important in a second. Um, but around here, essentially we have lots of muscles which allow this shoulder to produce as much movement um, as more movement than any other joint possible so uh, the reason why it's able to do that like i said because we have a ball we have it in a ball and socket formation if for example the knee uh, which opens and closes it doesn't have much movement and um, it's a quite stable joint the shoulder has lots of movement 360 degrees of movement and it's not classed as a very stable joint because of that fact. So we heavily rely on the muscles which feed into the shoulder, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, uh, teres minor, and subscapularis. They're the four rotator cuff muscles that are gonna work on this shoulder of ours to keep it healthy and stable. All right, so now we know a little bit more about what the shoulder is. And um, we wanna know what sort of, what are the main injuries we can get in this shoulder and I'm sure many bowlers or people or even fielders who are throwing the ball a lot have suffered from shoulder pain at some point in their cricketing life. Uh, well one thing in common with both of these is both of them are using these muscles at the front so they're very anterior chain dominant movements so you're using this this pec of yours down here and these anterior deltoids whereas these muscles in the back becoming a little bit neglected well to be fair on yourself you've got a good activation of that them cuff muscles as you're in that in that position there many people don't now if you imagine over and over again you're coming always coming down this way when you're bowling or when you're throwing you're going to be still everything's pushing forwards everything's coming from the front chain to try and drive that energy behind it we don't have the stability back here now the most common injury which i sort of should have mentioned is rotator cuff syndrome or we're going to call it we're going to say it's tendonitis now what tendonitis is is essentially too much stress being placed on a tendon and um, now that can come from repetitive movements however there's a bit of a myth that goes around where if you do something repeatedly you're going to injure it that's not true the only way you, you're gonna injure something by doing something repeatedly is if there's a leak in power or a leak in strength around that structure. So for, for as you're throwing or as you're bowling, the leak in power that's gonna come from here is through these muscles because we're not really using them. We're using all of these muscles here. We're gonna, there's a lot of tendons inside down here. So as you strengthen up down here, this lengthens you start developing this hunched over posture here and I'm sure many people um, walk around like this. It's not because your arms are so big, <laughs> it's because with, with these muscles back here aren't as strong as what we need them to be. Now, that becomes an issue because we're gonna get this skeleton back out in between, in between this, this ball and socket joint across here, we have lots of tendons. We have lots of muscles that travel in between there not like any other joint in the body. So if you become too dominant at the front, this shoulder's gonna stop rotating forwards, giving you that hunched position. Every time you then try and move it, you're gonna be catching the tendons in between and you're gonna be irritating them and it's not gonna feel comfortable. So what Ibi has explained very well there is about how everything works as a package. And from a strength and conditioning side, that's something we work on a lot. So we're not training muscles, we're training movements we're making sure that everything works really well together. And if you look at any of our, our videos about power hitting or bowling, we talk about getting energy from the floor and it traveling up through our body into the ball or into the bat. And that energy, if 
parts of our body aren't working optimally how we need them to, then that energy leaks and we lose energy. And not only does performance then suffer, but we then increase the risk of injury. All right, so to put that all into perspective, there's a, there's a small test which, which I use um, with, with some, of, some of the clients that come over, just to see whether they have, this, have a good range in, in that shoulder of ours. Now, range of movement doesn't necessarily mean um, it's, it's a good thing. Some people have more range of movement than others. However, we essentially want to be, have enough range of movement for us to not get injured. Um, and the way we do that is not by stretching. To, to be completely honest, I don't think stretching is, is very good. Um, to gain range of movement, we need to be nice and strong in all dimensions so we get up that complete athletic performance rather than one plane of movement all the time. So what I want you to do, so I'm going to do a little bit of a test on you to see how athletic you are, <laughs> how athletic these shoulders of yours are. So have a lie down on the floor for us, on your back. So this is something uh, everyone can do at home to just see if they have enough movement in their shoulder to be sort of be bowling safely or to be throwing safely. If they have enough range of movement to do it in an athletic way, in an optimum way. Now, first thing we notice about you, Sam, them shoulder of yours, them shoulders of yours are a little bit off the ground there, um, which is not a problem. Probably a little bit too tight from the pecs down here. We can strengthen up through infraspinatus, these muscles at the back down here to try and improve that. Now the test. So what I want you to do, Sam, I want you to lift both arms up into the air for me. Good, palms facing forwards. I want you to just let your arms drop. That's perfect. Now, are you right hand, left handed? Uh, right, right hand. <laughs> right handed. Okay, so what usually happens with with right-handed bowlers or right-handed um, or people who throw right-handed shall we say uh, is they become very very tight through these pecs of ours uh, very very tight through sort of serratus also and then we struggle to get this full range of movement in this shoulder and i don't know if we can see on camera but sam's right hand down here isn't touching this bed Whereas this left one down here is, is touching this mat nicely. I called it a bed. <laughs> so um, this is something we can do at home. You can do it off the edge of your bed, just on your back, just let the arms drop. And if we're struggling to get this arm down naturally, we know that we're very dominant and very overworking these muscles across here. So the way we improve that is essentially, we wanna counteract that by improving everything back here. Stretching the muscle is not gonna do anything. Right, right, another test we're gonna do, I'm sure you remember when I, at the start when I talked about that shoulder rolling forwards like this. Now, um, if that tendon's irritated in here, um, if we sort of manually roll that shoulder forwards on yourself, which I'm gonna do in a second, and it's painful, we know we're putting too much pressure on the on the, the tendons or the muscles across this front down here, the rotator cuff muscles. So something you're gonna do, you're gonna take this arm out in front of you like this, perfect. 90 degrees here, 90 degrees down here. You're gonna put the hand under the elbow down here, that's not gonna move. And someone's just gonna come and they're gonna push down. So just relax for me, that's it. Now, if that's painful, what we know is, is that painful? Uh, a little pinch, just there. A little pinch. So what we know is you're very dominant through these front muscles of yours, and you being a, a batsman, you're, you're likely to be very front dominant because you're always doing that same swinging motion in the forwards, forwards plane. Um, I'm yes. I'm interested. Right, so let's try it on here. So there's two ways of doing it. One, you can have it like that, or some people, for having the hand underneath down here. We'll do it this way. And we just go across here. Have we got any pain down here? Mm, similar, yeah. Similar. And again, just a pinch. Little pinch. Now, although it's a, a little pinch, we, as athletes, we know we shouldn't really be feeling that. We don't want to be playing in pain. We don't want to be feeling any of these movements. We should have good movements all range, in, in all ranges, yeah. Um, so we know, for a fact, you're very strong through this, this front chain of yours. And we just need to build this posterior chain up of yours just to try and counteract that. And then when that's nice and strong and we do that again, that's not gonna, you're not gonna have any pain there and you'll probably have a little bit more movement going across down that way. 
told you why you might be getting the pain but what do we do when uh, when we have the pain and we're wanting to play again because uh, firstly stop playing um, or rest a little bit because you don't want to keep doing the aggravating movement you're going to make it worse it's common sense but what we're going to do Sam we're going to pretend you're injured we're going to pretend your shoulders hurting every time you bowl or you take a swing um, and I'm going to show you what you what you want to be doing you probably already know this but we're gonna, I'm going to show you anyway so like I said before so if you come and uh, face face that way for us perfect like I said before we want to get these muscles back here nice and strong to make sure we have a good functional stable shoulder to counteract all of the stress we're putting on these muscles here leading them to become um, a lot a lot more dominant and a lot stronger than the ones at the back down here so the first thing one you're going to do is, is is probably the most simple exercise um, however it's it's a very important exercise because it works the muscle the infraspinatus muscle which we don't tend to use much so what you're going to have a you what you're going to do for me sam you're going to lie down on your non-affected arm now um usually i'll give someone a cushion before they do this underneath the head just to make them a little bit more bit more comfortable uh, but what you're going to do for it sam is first you're going to get this shoulder of yours in a good position so you're going to pull it back just like that and you're going to pull it down as well so it's back and down that's the athletic shoulder position so now we've got you uh into that good position sam what you're going to do is you're going to bend that elbow to a 90 degree angle perfect okay now one thing i forgot to try and help you whilst you're doing this movement here i'm going to put a towel underneath there or something underneath there to keep that elbow nice and locked into your rib cage down. so don't have a towel what we do have is an exercise band that's good enough and if you squeeze that down for me and you're going to keep that locked in that's not going to slip anywhere good good shoulder position now i'm going to give you this weight you hold on to that it's not too heavy is it no, no good so. perfect now what all you're going to do for me sam is you're going to rotate your shoulder outwards nice staying at a 90 degree angle for me good and back down all the way all the way all the way and you're not going to let this shoulder roll forwards perfect and back up excellent Good, and back down for me. Back up. And we're just seeing that shoulder blade just creeping forwards. You're really trying to engage all these glass better. I can feel all that engaged. Nice, good. Good 90 degree angle at the elbow. And we're letting that arm drop as far as it can without coming off that rib cage. I really feel there in the way down the shoulder wants to roll. And that's just trying to resist it. That's it, that's part of the And when you resist it, the contraction you feel there is pretty big. Good. Slowly back down. Now this exact exercise, what you'll see is if you've ever been to a live cricket game before you'll see all the bowlers, um, all the batsmen doing some form of this exercise, whether it's with a, with a weight or whether it's with a resistance band. Now this is one exercise that really works to make sure we have good bulletproof shoulders. And as you can see, Sam's keeping his shoulder in a perfect position. What if, we, if you show us how we do it wrong, Sam? That's it, that's, that's what everyone wants to do. That's not what we want to do. And go back to a good. Perfect. So what Ibby's just said there about what the pros do, to try and replicate that exercise with a band. I see that a lot in a lot of club cutters where they've seen it on the telly, so in the warm-up they'll do it, but there's not a massive understanding as to why they're doing it. So we often see a lot of bad demos in club warm-ups. So we'll have two people, one with a band like this, one holding it behind, and you'll have people doing this kind of thing, thinking they're warming up the shoulder, whereas actually, you don't really know what that's doing, do you? No idea what that's doing, <laughs> causing so injuries. If you are going to do this exercise, do the same principles that we've just done with the dumbbell on the floor to keep that shoulder, uh, elbow still, and then it's a nice, slow, controlled 
contraction in there and it's got nowhere near as much activation for me as what I've just had doing it with a dumbbell on the floor. I personally don't like it but I'd like to see people do that more than that rubbish. Okay. Perfect. Can I just add a, add a point to that? Yep. Um, so as you were saying Sam, you, you, you're talking about all that, that rubbish that you're getting with a, a lot of club cricketers. One way I do it myself to prevent myself doing it is in my starting position, so I'll always try and start in this position here, but what I try and do is get my armpit and try and face it to directly in front of me. So I'm in that position there. Now just from that small movement that I'm doing here, everything is engaged at the back down here. Now if I try and keep that movement there, and I do that, it's very hard for me to then start rolling my shoulder forwards. As soon as I roll my shoulder forwards, my armpit's facing down. I want to get that chest out, I want to point that armpit towards towards whoever's in front of me or whatever is in front of me and going from that position instead. Shoulders of steel. <laughs> the next exercise, uh, some, something I, I do personally before I play and I get people to do um, before they play is it's something we call a wideband raise, and I, you've probably seen different variations of this on, on, on uh, YouTube. I think you did one of these exercises on one of your videos as well. With a mini band. Yep. Yeah. Um, now this might be a little bit too wide, um, but that's, that's, that's fine. So what, what it, essentially what all this is, is we want to be using the shoulder whilst the cuff is activated, whilst these muscles at the back are activated. Because although you're isolating the muscle with that movement, we want to train more athletically and we want to have that cuff activated as we move the shoulder. Because when we're, when we're bowling, um, we need that cuff to be activated as we're coming through, all the way through the movement. So, the way you're going to do that, hands down by your sides like this. I like having the band um, sort of under my thumb down here. And I, again, I'm going to make sure I'm in that athletic position, keeping them shoulders back. Um, so if you want to demonstrate that Sam. Yeah. Perfect. So you get into that nice, perfect, good position. And now, as you can see, Sam's got a little bit of resistance on this band. Now that resistance doesn't change. I don't want you to start pushing out too hard against it. I don't want that to start coming in. If it starts coming in, we'll do another one. Yeah. So what I want you to do now, Sam, keeping them elbows completely locked out for me, keeping them shoulder blades back and down into that good athletic position there. What I want you to do is bring the bring the arms up as far as you can. Good. And again, we can see you Are really it keep it get it overhead for me. Good. And now it's on the way down. A lot of people struggle to keep this activated down here. Perfect. And just come back down. Keep them shoulder blades back and down. Perfect. And again, this this movement here isn't about how heavy you can use the band. And this is all about control and keeping everything activated from the back down here. Very good. Now, where are you feeling that? Uh, I've got quite a bit of my traps. Good. Excellent, good. Right, do one more for us. Changes throughout. Yeah, so as you're moving the shoulder, you're using different muscles in the shoulder to bring it up to certain points. You're not going to be using the same muscle all the way up. What the goal of this exercise is, is we want to be have all of these muscles at the back working constantly whilst the muscles in the shoulder change to lift that shoulder up, keeping it nice and stable making sure there's a lot of room in that shoulder for all the tendons and all the other structures to move freely inside. I think it's also really important with when you're trying to get into this athletic position that Ibi talks about is we're not cheating and we're not just leaning back and extending our ribs because that's what I imagine a lot of people will do and then they'll say they won't feel it as much in the right places so they'll just extend through their lower back and then it's easy or easy on the shoulder, whereas if we get into, we make a core tight, nice short string between our belly button and our ribcage, shoulders back and down, and then really control that contraction through that. Uh, 
the third exercise what we're going to do and this is an exercise not only used in in cricket um, but I've seen many athletes doing this exercise and it's one of their their staple exercises we'll call it that um, so what you're going to do Sam is uh, you're going to get into a, a, a nice athletic position down here you're going to be on one knee you're going to have that core engaged down here and you're going to have your shoulders back this way and I want you facing facing me down here perfect now we're going to grab the the band with this arm down here perfect now what you're going to do for me sam there's four parts to this movement we're going to go through them parts nice and slow so the starting part of this movement down here you're going to be out here now here i don't mind the shoulder blade coming out because one part of the exercise the first part of the exercise is bringing the shoulder blade back so bring that shoulder blade back and down for me perfect and go forwards and back good and forwards again and back good so as you can see with Sam demonstrating very nicely no movement coming from this chest of his no movement coming from the back of his all that movement is just the shoulder blade just back and forwards like that if you're moving from other places in the body you're doing it wrong do it in a mirror it helps right so that's the first part sorted so let's just demonstrate that perfect now from this position here um, on your Instagram page again Sam you, you show you demonstrate an exercise where you're pulling across just like that perfect now I'm just gonna add a little bit I'm gonna add a little bit of a change to that so not gonna be rotating but we're gonna come up a little bit higher with this down here that's it so if you just come back to the starting point so pull the shoulder back that's it pull the elbow perfect now the key with this again which you've done really well is you've not pulled with the hand you've pulled with the elbow instead so essentially the hands just holding the band the elbow is pulling pulling it back now you don't want to be going too far back I don't you don't want to be doing this and you don't want to be too far forwards that again Sam does it really well the body's nice and still that arm is in a perfect position just like that just what we want perfect so now from here Sam again something you've you've done on your on your Instagram page you're gonna be just lifting up across there perfect now that's probably already a little bit difficult you can already feel that burning yeah now from there so that's the third part which you've done extremely well all whilst you've maintained that again that athletic performance which I keep going on athletic position which I keep going on about um, that shoulder blades back and down really try and point that armpit towards me perfect just like that now what I want you to do from there is push go up into a shoulder press that's it and you're going to reverse that as you come down or making sure that shoulder blades activated down excellent and forwards let that shoulder blade come forwards <laughs> good now even if you're not injured all these three exercises um, should be part of our so our, our routine our exercise routine um, it's the way of maintaining good healthy bulletproof shoulders so instead of waiting for them to get injured um, let's fix the problem before it actually does happen and what you'll find by having a good stable shoulder back here good post stable posterior chain is when you are throwing when you are bowling you're not bowling from a, a loose weak position you're going to be bowling from a, a good strong position with the shoulder it's going to allow you to stand up a little bit straighter because you're not falling over the you're not falling over because of the weakness in the shoulder here and you know Sam if you're if you're in a good strong position up here or if you're in a good strong position up here it's only going to mean one thing it's going to be more energy transferred into the movement we're wanting to do and it's the same with batting if you're if you're good strong shoulders down here and that's nice and stable hitting the ball is going to be a lot easier because um, everything's coming from a, a good powerful position a good stable position so we're not trying to hit we're not going to be trying to really slog that ball um, we're going to be looking to sort of time it more because we know we've we've got the strength up here and we've got the power up there to to clear clear the ropes Spot on. Uh Hopefully you've enjoyed that video, hope you've taken quite a lot from it, uh, please like, subscribe and we shall hear from Eddie again soon. Definitely.